So I'm currently a PhD student at the MIT Media Lab in a group called Lifelong Kindergarten. And the mandate of the group is to develop technologies and develop environments that enable people of all ages, but particularly young people, to have creative learning experiences. So this is something I've, it's been a thread throughout my life, so that's what drew me to the Media Lab. And one of our big projects is a, an application called Scratch which makes it really easy for young people to create their own interactive media. So kids are surrounded by digital media, interactive digital media, but a lot of their engagement is framed around use, consumption, and it's, they have fewer opportunities to engage as producers, as creators, as designers, so we wanted to flip that. You know, How can we make it really easy for kids to create it? So that's sort of what provoked some of the work around Scratch. And so then with Scratch, you can create a game, a story, an animation, whatever you want, and share it in this large online community. So just like on YouTube, how you can share videos, the Scratch website, which was launched, I guess now in May 2007, is a place where kids are posting like millions of projects. We've almost hit the two million project mark with Scratch. And so when I look at that, I, it made me think of my own experiences growing up. You know, I've always had this fascination with computers and with technology, and I really wanted that to be a thread that I pursued throughout my life, this idea of like, what does it mean to engage with these technologies? How can we make these technologies available to more young people, particularly through these design roles? Both my parents were kind of technology conservative, I guess they were. It's not like they were crazy digital people, They were, uh, but my father, sort of when home computers were initially sort of coming on the market, he's like, well, this seems interesting, we'll bring one home, we'll see what happens. He had no interest in engaging with it, my mother had no interest in engaging with it, but it was sitting in our basement, I just became obsessed with it. And, uh, and so that's really sort of like the start, that was the start of it for me, was the this, this, this space to explore and to play and create and you know I was using a basic paint editor to make my own pictures, I was playing games, it seemed like a really fun thing to be doing. But after high school, that's not what I did, so I was a music major first actually, <laughs> and I, did, I didn't even know that computing was something that people studied. And so I did music for a few years and um, I'd always been kind of a big math geek. And so I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to study math instead. And a friend of mine said, you don't want a math degree. You should, you should look at computer science as an area of study. And I was like, oh, that's, I didn't know that was a thing that you could study. And so I ended up going into a computer science math program. And again, it just was like such a fascinating area of study for me. You know, it, all of this mystery around technology. You know, I enjoyed interacting with computers, but I didn't really understand how they worked. And I loved the demystification process that was computer science. And I felt really empowered to ask new questions, different questions about technology around me. So it was incredibly empowering to be able to see the technological world around me and not just take it for granted. I could say like, why does it work that way? How does that work that way? And I can answer some of those questions. So a lot of my work is focused on, well, how can I enable other people to be able to ask questions? So in the first couple of years of Scratch, I spent a lot of time talking with young Scratchers. And one of the things I would ask them was like, how did you find out about Scratch? And for a lot of them, they're like, my mom showed me, my dad showed me, my aunt, my uncle, whoever, uh, what do they do? They're computer scientists, they're computer engineers. These are kids who are probably going to have good technology experiences one way or another. So just before coming to the Media Lab, I had been at an ed school and I was really fascinated with the relationship that teachers and schools had with, to, through technology. So I said, what, what would it look like if we tried to make connections, greater connections to schools and Scratch? Because that might be a way of broadening participation. That might be a way of reaching beyond just the kids who were probably going to have good technology experiences. And so that's been a main focus of my work, actually, is working with teachers to let them have that sort of comfort and that exploratory and that investigative approach to technology that it's okay. It's okay to not know everything. Uh, you know, if you're engaged in a design activity like creating a game with Scratch, it's not fun if you already know all the answers or if everyone's making exactly the same thing. So how can we make it a space where you can explore and uh, develop as a creative thinker, again, relating it back to sort of the big mission of lifelong kindergarten is that we want people to develop as creative thinkers because the biggest problems in the world are not going to be solved by, 
you know, like this is the problem, the answer is in the back of the book. You're going to have to be creative, you're going to have to think of lots of different ways of solving the problem. And if you have no opportunities to practice that sort of design approach to the world, you know, it's a habit of mind, it's a perspective, it's a way of thinking about yourself. And if you never get opportunities to practice it, then it's unlikely that you're really going to draw on that as a core practice in later life. I, well, I'm, I'm constantly disappointed by the way in which teachers are portrayed, and not just because I used to teach. <laughs> it's, not, it's not purely a self-interested thing. But, you know, think of all of the things that brought teachers to the profession that they're in. You know, they, every teacher I have met has this core commitment to supporting the learning of young people. And I think there's like bureaucratic things, there are just like all sorts of things that interfere and impinge on them achieving those dreams. And so I think providing spaces of learning for teachers and treating them like professionals is just a key thing that we constantly need to strive for. So in my work I try and create learning environments and learning opportunities for teachers that value them as learners, you know, and let them recapture that sense of wonder and let them think about the potential for their students. I think they just, I mean, everyone, you know, no one has enough time to do everything they want, but there are so many demands on teachers that it's, it's not surprising that they don't get to do everything that they want to do. So whatever we can do to support them, I'm very passionate about, like, how can we create those opportunities for teachers as well? Uh, two big things happen. So connecting, obviously to other people. So, you know, this set of 12 really awesome people got together and we had these amazing mentors with us to provide guidance. So there's sort of a person connecting thing happening, which was really exciting. But even more exciting than that, and it's obviously this is connected to the people who are there, at connecting of ideas. You know, I mean, you're at an, I'm at MIT, I'm at the Media Lab, and I get to interact with all sorts of interesting people that to get sort of out of outside of your comfort zone and meet new people who are thinking about the same sorts of ideas that you are but are coming from very dis different disciplines or coming from very different approaches, that's been really very powerful. So these intellectual connections and personal connections have been, I'd say that was sort of like the biggest thing for me this week. But then that led to the other sort of main activity, I think that, and this was a theme that kept coming up again and again, I don't know if it's already come up, uh, this idea of translating, because we do come from very different disciplines. So even if we have this sort of shared core commitment, there is some translation work to be done. Of like, I call it this thing, you call it that thing. So doing that mapping, doing that translating. So I'd say connecting and translating are the two big activities that we've been engaged in this week. Our trip to USC was really powerful yesterday. So actually, so Holly Willis was one of the mentors this week and I was in a small group interaction with her and I was, I'm just so impressed with the work she does, but it was really powerful to be sort of on her home turf and see the work that she's doing. And again, related to what I just said about translating, there's, there's so much overlap between the work that we're doing in Lifelong Kindergarten and my research and the work that they're doing. It feels like we're on these sort of like parallel tracks. So I was really excited to be there. I felt like it, it made this connection in this very physical way for me that was very powerful. So I think I'm going to be unpacking. I mean, there was so much that happened this week that I think my head is going to be buzzing for the next <laughs> several weeks. But that was, that was like particularly powerful for me to be just sitting in Holly Willis's space and thinking about these ideas with her and having these conversations with other people. So I wanted to talk to people like me. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to find people who, had, who shared the same core commitments. I love being at the Media Lab. It's a phenomenal place. Uh, but it's characterized, one of the ways in which it's characterized is that it's made up of a bunch of different research groups. So there are some people who are making sort of novel prosthetics. There are people who are making robots. So our research group is sort of the only, one of the only groups that's really focused on the sort of theme of digital media and learning. So I really wanted to connect with other people. And I've been to the previous, I attended the two previous DML conferences and I was just, it was like being with family, you know, you were, I was so excited to have these interactions with people and so when it was raised as a possibility of having an intensive week with a small group of people who share all of the same passions that I do, I was like, I can't pass it up, <laughs> which is basically what I wrote in my application. I was like, I want to connect with these people in a very deep way. And even though we come from very different perspectives, you know, I think we all share this desire to 
develop better understandings of you know what is the digital, what is media, what is learning. So it's been it's been fantastic and it's exceeded my expectations. Well, in the short term, I'm going to be at the media lab for a while longer. So I'm I'm getting towards the end of my program, but I still have you know my PhD to write, my dissertation to write, and then beyond that, I'm not sure. You know, I for a long time I've wanted an academic job, and that's still the case, but particularly in sessions like this, I see all sorts of different types of opportunities and different spaces I can imagine myself in. So I think there's a lot, it's opened new questions to ask. You know, I came in with a set of questions, I got some answers, but I also am leaving with like an enormous number of new questions to ask, so I'm really excited.